Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm glad that you are together, that we are with me together here again. Uh, I would like you to remember, though, this is a, a hard thing that we're all doing, that we're doing it to watch over each other and to care for each other. Before we go on, I would like you to remember Kelly Bodnark's brother, Keith Hinckley, in your thoughts and prayers. Keith died this past weekend. Now let us, be, let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I've chosen a little hymn that the choir sang during Lent, Lead Me, Lord. We're going to sing it through. The words will be, should be on your screen. Uh, when I get this part of the, that next part of the video done, the words should be on the screen. Uh, we'll sing it through two times. Uh, the second time a little slower and a little quieter. Lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness. Make thy way plain before my face. For it is thou, Lord, thou, Lord only, that makest me dwell in safety. Lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness, make thy way plain before my face. For it is thou, Lord, thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. My scripture reading today for us to contemplate, to think about, is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Last week we, pre we had a story from 1 Peter as well. 1 Peter 2, verses 18 through 25. 1 Peter 2, verses 18 through 25 from the New International Version of the Scriptures. Listen to the Word of God. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading. If you have been wondering where I have been getting these scripture readings from week to week, I have been using one of the 
Sunday lectionary readings for the midweek devotions as well. This Wednesday's reading almost made me change my tactics and pick a different reading without informing you of my reason. But I did some more reading and thinking and praying and decided to go ahead with it. The lectionary reading leaves out verse 18, the first verse that I read to you. Verse 18 says, Slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect, not only to those that are good and considerate, but also to those that are harsh. Well, you know, that verse alone can cause enormous problems and cause us to miss out what, miss what Peter is trying to say to us, what he's trying to point to. But if we do not read it or hear it, we lose the chance to struggle with it. We miss the chance to talk about how we interpret scriptures. The New Testament scholar Walter Wink once wrote, 150 years ago when the debate over slavery was raging, the Bible seemed to be clearly on the slaveholder's side. Abolitionists were hard pressed to justify their opposition to slavery on biblical grounds. I want to read you a story that was in one of the commentaries that I was reading about reading. I want to read you a story about a man named Howard Thurman. Dr. Thurman was an African American born in Daytona Beach, Florida in 1899. He graduated from high school, from Morehouse College, and from Rochester Divinity School. He was Dean of the Chapel at Boston University in the early 1950s and was a mentor to Martin Luther King Jr. when Dr. King was a student at Boston University. Howard Thurman knew what, this is from Dr. Thurman's uh, autobiography. Howard Thurman knew what it meant to redefine himself and his children in the face of racism, the residue of slavery in America. In his autobiography, Dr. Thurman recalls the day he took his two little daughters to Daytona Beach where he had grown up. We sauntered down the long street from the Baptist Church to the riverfront. At length we passed the playground of one of the white public schools. As soon as Olive and Anne saw the swings, they jumped for joy. Look, Daddy, let's go over and swing. This was the inescapable moment of truth that every black parent in America must face soon or late. What do you say to your child at the critical moment of primary encounter? You can't swing on those swings. Why, Daddy? When we get home and have some cold lemonade, I will tell you. When we had had our lemonade, Anne pressed for the answer. We're home now, Daddy. Tell, tell us. I said, it is against the law for us to use those swings even if it is a public school. Only white children can play there. But it takes the state legislature, the courts, the sheriffs and policemen, the white churches, the mayors, the banks and businesses, and the majority of white people in the state of Florida. It takes all these to keep two little black girls from swinging on those swings. That is how important you are. Never forget, the estimate of your own importance and self-worth can be judged by how much power, by how much, never forget the estimate of your own importance and self-worth can be judged by how much power people are willing to use to keep you in the place they have assigned to you. You are two very important little girls. Thurman refused to let the unjust laws of state and nation define him or his daughters. For him, this was not only a secular notion, but the strong assurance that he was a child of God. No matter what the world said, he had been ransomed and set free. Faced with the realities of racism and exclusion, Thurman could say to his daughters, you are two very important little girls. I hope you will ponder and pray on these truths. Let us bow our heads in prayer. 
God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. By the waters of death you raised us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to have us close with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go now, go now in peace. Live as free women and men, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now, this day, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, friends. I'll see you again soon.